don't have my laptop with me. Muse. I'm not writing anything at the moment. Well, I am, but not at this particular moment. I wanted to have a talk with you about something. I've always felt that it is the duty of every artist to hold up the mirror to society so that they can see the reflection, good or bad, and remind everybody both how far we've come and how far we have to go. And Thursday night, no, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, <laughs> Tuesday night, I was laying in bed with my laptop doing two things. I was watching the outcome of the election while trying to write. Now, clearly, my writing suffered that night. However, however, as I am currently writing The Dark Side Down, which is, you know, I mean, you're helping me. You're inspiring me to write this. That is a, it is a third book in the Nameless Saga, which much of which takes place in hell. So... The, the election, actually, this whole election has been great fodder for me to use in this book. Maybe not directly, but it, it helped to, to take me to those dark places that I needed to be in order to write this book. Because it's a challenge sometimes writing these dark distractions. But that's not really what I want to talk about. As an artist, I have always felt like um, it is my part of my job is to to take things from society and let them dwell inside of me so that they can inspire the journeys that I have to take, the artistic journeys. And uh, we, we all know that artists are a, a, a different breed of creature. We live, breathe, and die by our connections to the universe. We hold on to those feelings as if our very lives depended upon them. And so when the election was happening and I, I was, uh, wasn't sure that I could believe what my eyes were seeing, I used that to write. I used all of those all of that deep-seated sorrow and fear. And I allowed it to pour out onto the page. And when I went back and I looked the next day, as I always do, my first question was simple. Do I keep this? Do I keep this little glimpse into my personal psyche? And how this particular event affected me. Do I keep it in the book? And I realized that I've always tried to be very true to the moment. Very, very, there have been times when people have asked me if I wanted to go back and rewrite some of my earlier works because my craft has improved dramatically. And those books are published, and I have the rights to them, so I could. 
I could go back and I could I could rewrite A Blade Away or Gothica or even I Zombie Eye. But then when I think about that, I realize that those books were written the way they were written as a product of that moment. And it would be a dishonor for me to go back and rewrite them because I'm not in that moment anymore. I'm not that person anymore. I'm not the same me who wrote A Blade Away. And the environment is not even remotely similar. And so I would be doing a a an injustice to the story and to the characters and the intent if I were to meddle with it. And we as artists, we grasp a hold of these moments as if they were gold, as if, as if our lives depended upon them. And we use those moments in our art. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's very easy to, to step back and, and think, should I feel dirty for that? But no. That's what the universe has handed us. And it's due to such a deep-seated emotional connection to ourselves and to everything around us that allows us to feel so deeply and use it in our work. And we shouldn't feel guilty about that. We shouldn't question how we interpret the inspiration the universe gives us. Because that's who we are. It's who I am as an artist at this moment in time. And I will not apologize for that. And <laughs> the... The reason why I wanted to talk to you about this is because there are instances where I find inspiration outside of this little circle that you and I have. There is a demon in the dark side down that everybody will recognize. And it wasn't inspired by you. And I, I don't apologize for that to you or to anybody. I have to, I have to use the, the, the emotions that I am given. I have to take advantage uh, of, of my point of view as it applies to the world around me. Because that's my voice. And that voice is part and parcel to where I am today. <sighs> and also, fueling, using that and funneling it into my work is not only cathartic, it's also somewhat therapeutic. So I can deal with the tragedies that happen to me and to the, 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 the loved ones around me and, and to the country itself and to the world. I can use those and funnel it in to my work and I can, I can cope. Because sometimes one of the bitter ironies of being an artist is sometimes we don't have the best tools in which to cope. We don't have the mechanisms. Not always. 
And so our art very often becomes our therapy and our coping mechanism. And so I coped, copiously coped, with what just happened here in America. And I coped through hell. <laughs> Literally, figuratively, and metaphorically. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for listening, Muse. It's nice to know that you're always there for me, whether it be for inspirado for my words or just to hear me out when I feel things are coming unraveled. That's all I got to say right now. Let's get back to work, okay? <laughs>